Um, one other extra thing, so that was a real blessing. That's the man, that was the main testimony I was talking about, about Adam. Um, but I did want to add a little addition here, and you can uh, start the timer if you want to keep it at five minutes or something or less. Three. Three? Okay, I'll try to be fast. Uh, <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I really, uh, I, I just want to kind of encourage everybody and not to make it seem like uh, we're going out with, with like our intent is to laser in on somebody who's on crutches or someone whose arm is in a sling, you know, and we go right after them. Um, we want to see people healed, right? We want, to, we want to be able to operate our, in the manifestation of healing, and we want to be able to exercise our authority in Christ. And, uh, and then when we see somebody hurting, you know, right, we just have compassion and we want to help people. So, where all that starts from is our love, right? It's because we love people. And why, why are we out there in the first place? Well. I mean, and Mark's, he's fun to hang out with, but he's, that's not the reason why we went. <laughs> Sorry, Mark. <laughs> he's coming over to our house for lunch tomorrow, so he knows, he knows he's in. He's in the right. So, anyways, uh, um, I just wanted to talk for a minute about, the, about love. And uh, um, there's a whole lot of... Uh, um, uh, let's just say different um, reasons why people want to do things for other people in the world, right? So, and that different situations uh, with people in their personal health uh, open up different avenues for different. For just people, bottom line, to put it this way, bottom line, people need to be whole, right? Bottom line, people, it's God's will, and we all know this, it's God's will for people to be whole. Um, what can get in the way with people in the world is how that comes about. So we all know, like I said, we all know what God's will is, for one. And we all know that it's God's will for us to help others who may not understand that also. So uh, I just wanted to talk a little bit about some things that um, could be challenging. Because if I am someone who thinks like, well, I need to, this is a stumble and I fall and I break my arm, okay? It feels like it's broken. I can't move it, and I just need healing. So somebody can, I can, I can be like, Marie, pray, pray for me. My wife, I can ask my wife, pray for me. I need, I need something right now. My arm, I, it feels like it's broken. Can't move it. It's extremely painful. Minister to it and tell it to be well. So she can do that, and then. I might be like, okay, great, let's go. I need to get, let's go to the hospital. I need to get an X-ray and get get, get cast, right? Okay, so, or I could just be like, well, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna hold on to that ministering. Or, you know, she said she's declared wholeness over my arm, and I'm gonna think about that and I'm gonna focus on that. Now, I'm not saying one way is right and one way is wrong. Okay. All I'm saying is that based on your believing with what you need in the situation to be done to expect wholeness, that's what's, what God ultimately wants, is you, is you to be whole. So a loving God isn't going to want you to not do something that's not going to bring about wholeness. Does that make sense? He's going to want you to do what is it, whatever... He's going to, which obviously he's going to want you to believe in him for wholeness. <laughs> I'm not getting, trying to side skirt that, okay? I'm just trying to say that um, we all need to respect each other's positions and in, 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 in what they're believing, where they are at with their faith and 
where we are at as ones who minister with our faith. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, I mean, to, to, to just be able to, um, to be able to move just from love, I think you're not going to be able to mess it up. You know, you can't. So, I'm sorry, I hope I didn't butcher all that, but, you know, I'm not sure my three minutes are well. <laughs> It's, we, need, we do need to be sensitive, and that's why we listen to the Holy Spirit of this person is there. You know, but we are out to say, this is available. Do you want this, or do you want this? Right. This is available now. You want it? Or, no, I'm okay with this. Okay. I'm going to bless you and be in agreement with you. Because they need, do need to feel that love. So thank you, Aaron, for sharing that. Uh, Lisa, did you want to share about your... So I was on a conference call this week with a client, and uh, one of my colleagues that also works with the same client mentioned that he was going to be out of the office uh, coming up soon because he has retinal detachment, and I don't know if he's even 40 years old. And so after that call, I uh, I am him, and I said, hey, you know, tell me a bit more about this, and. I had a similar issue a couple of years ago. I started seeing flashes in my eye, and that it resolved itself. And um, so I asked him if I could pray for him, and he said, "Sure, we can do that. That's fine." So I finally get around to calling him today, and um, after we've been texting a little bit, I said, "Let me just." I just called him. I said, "Rather than going back and forth, let's just talk." So I asked him how he was doing, and he told me his surgery is uh, next next Friday. And so I said, well, if it's okay, I'll just, you know, I said, well, what, what are you wanting to, to see happen? And, and he said, well, I just want it to go away. I want to be able to, because he has lost some sight already. And he said, I really want to be able to see well and not have to worry about it ever again. I just want to to be back to normal. And I said, okay. I said, because I can explain to him that it's, you know, we can, I can pray for him and we can command healing into that eye. And he said, oh, you're so sweet. You know, and I've known him for a long, long time because we worked together for, with, a, with several clients. And um, and he's known, um, when I told him how, I said, remember how I, I used to get pneumonia all the time? And I said, I don't even have that anymore. It's been healed, uh, God healed me, and I'm fine. And he said, oh, wow, I didn't know that. I mean, I said, he goes, I remember he used to get sick a lot. Because um, I would have him on there two, three times a year. And he said, um, I said, so I'm, you know, I'll pray for you right now. He goes, oh, okay. He goes, well, I'm not a very spiritual, you know, very religious person is how he said it. And he goes, but I'm kind of spiritual. And I said, well, let's, you know, let's just pray because God will take care of it for you. So I did, and um, and I said it's already done. You know, you want you want to do your surgery, so that's we're believing that it's it's going to be fine when you when the surgery is all said and done. And then we were talking again about um, how I've never been healthier than the last couple of years, and and he said, well, it's ironic that you mention that because my little son Carter has a really high fever today. I said, well, let's pray for him, too. He goes, oh, he said, you're just so sweet. And I said, well, why not? Don't you want to? I said, don't you want to be well? He goes, of course I do. I'm going to get his medicine right now. So I prayed for him, commanded he lived his body. And um, so then later I, t I texted him after we got him talking. And I said, be sure to check his temperature before you give him the, the medicine. And uh, I haven't heard back from him. He said, yeah, I'll do that. And I haven't heard back from him, but I'm believing that it's it's all all done. So I, it's like the more I listen, the more I hear, obviously, a lot of colleagues, because that's who I talk to all day, is colleagues and clients. And um, so it's a big opportunity for me to witness to them and step out and give them healing, too. What you received, what I received. Awesome. Thank you. Just stepping up because you've, you've never really done that a lot, you know. 
And so this is you stepping out, expecting God to meet you. When you say this, this is what's going to happen because of Jesus in you. That's what we're supposed to do. Amen? Sam, do you want to share? Or Aaron? All right. So I'm Sam. And uh, hmm, let me pick a testimony from today. There's a lot of them. And so, so I went to a, a conference at The Rock today and yesterday. But today, um, you know, I was just like, oh my God, you know, I'm going to be bold in my faith. I love giving, like, asking God for words for people and stepping out and doing that. And I know because every time, I'm like, because I know this, that any time I ask God for something, a word, or a prayer for someone, I know that he's going to deliver. I know that that person's going to get healed. And I know that God's going to give me an exact word for that person that they need, right? And so I wanted to be bold, right? So, uh... Let me just pick this one. So there was a worship team that uh, that came up, right? And after they were done, they went to the, the back, and I got to work for one of them, right? And I was like, you know what, God? You give me work for one of them, I'll give work for, like, I'll ask you for work for all of them, right? So they were all in a little group, like a circle. And uh, so I walked by, and, you know, got to be bold, right? Yeah. It could be intimidating. It doesn't matter, because I know that God's going to come through if I step out like that. So what I did was I was like, hey, I got a word for you, right? And they were like, okay. And like some of them were like, let's see what this is about, right? Who is this person? And so he was like, I'm gonna record this. And I was like, he was like, I'm gonna record this. I think I know what you'll say. And then so, but then uh, I gave a word, right? Spot on, obviously, as God he gave, he came through. And uh, then I went to the next person, and uh, and I was like, I was like, hey, like I remember this because it was like very specific. I was like. You just started something, and it's going to flourish, grow more than you could ever imagine, and, you, and it's going to grow faster than you can imagine, and you're going to be able to handle it. And, he, and so I walked away, because I knew that. I knew that I was right. I heard God, and, and he was like, that was so accurate. I literally just started a business that God said I should. And then uh, next person, I was like, hey, all I got from you was teacher. And, and they were like, they were like, you know that shocked face that they do? And he was like, hey, I'm a kindergarten teacher. And, I, and, I, and then I gave, and then I encouraged them on that. And then the next person was like, what's going on with fashion? And they were like, I need to work on this merchandise for the, for the worship thing that we're doing. And I have no idea where to go from here. And I was like, this is what you're going to do. This is how you're going to do it. And that's how it's going to be. And then uh, the next person, and the next person, and then... Uh, and then after, after I got done with that, because I knew that I would come through, and he did, obviously, I got blessed. Because one of them, one of the people, was just like, hey, I'm going to speak into your life. And he said, I know I don't have to do that because I see that you know who you are, but I'm going to do it anyways. And I got blessed by it, and it was just so amazing and so great. And that's because every time I step out, I know that God's going to step in, because me and God are one. And I'm going to act in my true identity. And I encourage all of you today that whenever an opportunity arises, or if you see a moment that could be an opportunity, make it an opportunity and take it. Because when you take it, you'll see that result. And that's just what I wanted to say. So thank you guys so much. Thank you. So inspiring, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're going to talk about that boldness tonight. All right. We'll wrap up. Okay, so um, I have a little bit of a different testimony. Um, <laughs> I am going to share about um, how good God is, and you know, all of this, it's, it's all about that, but, but it's kind of like from my side of like being the one to receive and, and, and be on that end. Um, so today I was also at the conference at the Rock Church, and um, it, it was going great. It was like we were worshiping. This was doing worship, and I was like, I'm having such a great time. I was like, God, I love this. I love worship. This is amazing. And then suddenly, I just felt this like of like discouragement and sadness, and I was like, What is this? I was having such a good time, and and I knew it wasn't from God, and I knew that I just had to pray against it. But it was like when it just comes, you're kind of like I don't like this, you know? And and so I was kind of just like, Okay, God. I, I know this isn't for you, so just, just please, just, I do this a lot, I, I tend to like, instead of asking God for something specific, I say, God, just, just be here with me, because I, I know that I have everything within me to, to accomplish what I need to get rid of those feelings, so I'm kind of like, God, I know you're in me, but can you be like, next to me too, you know? <laughs> um, but
But it was cool because like Sam came came to me and he was like, because he could tell like something was off because um, I tend to wear my emotions mostly, I guess. Um, and so we could tell something was off, so he pulled me aside and then he's like, he's like encouraging me and stuff. I'm like, okay, I'm good. And then he's like, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna prophesy over you. And so then, and then right away he's just like, okay, God, give me a word for Aaron. And he starts talking and he brings up something very specific where he says, Aaron, you're royalty and you're a princess to God and I see a tiara on you. And I was like, instantly like, that's okay, because um, prior to this, two years ago, I got a very specific word about being God's princess and about royalty, and I've gotten like four different words about that, <laughs> like from different people who didn't know me, some who did know me but didn't, you know, whatever. And so, um, so I was like, okay, that's already great, amazing, something that, you know, that's awesome, like a great encouragement. But then he added something to it, and um, that was even like cooler. I would go into details now, but basically he just like added more onto it. And I was like, whoa, God, like this is so awesome. Like I'm really encouraged by this. And so then, um, like I went back and I was like, okay, cool. And then afterwards, I was still kind of feeling a little bit of like discouragement, kind of like I know I need to get rid of this. I know I just need to choose joy, but kind of weighing on still, right? So um, as we have our break and we're about to go into lunch, um, we, 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 Sam and I are walking out and then we pass by this booth that has like um, stones and like uh, painted stones and it's this lady who like does that as like a business ministry or whatever. And so I'm just talking to her, we're both talking to her and it's just a normal conversation and she's asking me about school and about whatever. And then she's like, I want to encourage you, I want to I give you something. And um, I have it here actually. She's like, I want to give this to you, this rock, and, and then she, she hands it to me, and I look at it, and it says royalty, and it has a crown on it, <laughs> and she says, I just see like a crown on you, and, and this woman I've never met before, she didn't know anything about how I was feeling, whatever, and I was like, I looked at her, and I saw this, and I was just like, what? what? <laughs> and, and it was just like, it was so cool, because it, it really like, Whenever, whenever stuff like this happens, it, it really makes me take like a step back and be like, thank you, God. <laughs> like, I know you're good, and every day you come through, even in like the smallest to the biggest things, but, but it's just so incredible to know that like, like you're seen, that God sees everything where you're at, and He knows, because he, he knew that I was like feeling discouraged. He knew that I just needed that extra like push of encouragement. And so, yeah, that was, that's my testimony. <laughs> God is good all the time. Amen? Amen? Well, Father God, thank you so much that you are with us, you are for us. We are so awed by your goodness. Whether we feel it or whether we've given it to someone else out of obedience, we know that that is the truth. And truth always wins over facts. Facts change, the truth doesn't. And so this is who you are. You are good. You are awesome. And we are here to worship you. And these testimonies are just that. To magnify your name. Yeah. You. For all eternity. This tiny snapshot that we have here on earth. That we are called to live it well. Because we all want to hear about that good and faithful sermon. But it's because of what you deserve. So we honor you, we praise you, we magnify your name, we focus on you. And we say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For being in us, for flowing through us, for hearing the cries of our hearts, for having provided everything we need for life and godliness. All of it through Christ Jesus. Whose name will be forever magnified. Name above all names. Yeah. Yes.
e ascolta a fine questa tarigatale che tu mi siete da quando vai a ascoltare che andrà di ascoltare di siete nel cacciato non lo preoccupate e tra ne le difatasci corrono di ascoltare di canavaiano che siete sciata da raccontare la vita frota ma gli altri mi sciolta di chi sciolta da da corro di cacciato nel canavaiano Ya shonye ne kishi te de kutada to frate ne da mati shota da kanaya ta. I came to give you freedom. Freedom. Freedom from worry. To comfort the oppressed. And healing that you've never experienced before. is fullness of joy. That's what the word of God says. And I will never leave you or forsake you is also your promise. So it is always there. You are always there with us. Okay. 
praise you. Thank you, Jesus. But that is the truth. And we put aside any and all lies that don't line up with that. Thank you. Thank you for your goodness. Continue worshiping uh, in song. The worship team wants to come on up. Wasn't that fun? Yes. Yes. It's great hanging out with Jesus and other believers. likes to say, you know, like photobombing and you jump in, you can prophecy bombing and jump in. And if that is for you as well, grab it. If you were, because that is God's path, just freedom and areas. You know? Okay. okay. So, when uh, Stan first started praying in tongues, I got a cool picture of uh, some butterflies, you know, flying, and, um, and, he, and I was like, okay, God, God, what does this mean, right? And uh, what he was saying was, is like, um, you know how, you know how, like, uh, the bugs could be in their, like, cocoons and stuff, right, or the chrysalis, and, like, before they, you know, sprout and actually turn into something beautiful, they're in that shell, right? And a lot of us could be in that shell today, right? But we don't want to stay in that shell. We want to grow into who we are. And so that's why we're here, to grow. But I want to say that every one of you guys have grown so, so much since you first started listening to Jesus. Not even before you started like coming here, but on your own, because you searched for him. But I just wanted to say that as this church is growing, as we are coming together and unified, we're starting to be that butterfly. And so we're going to be flying free. And so that's the plan. And that's literally what's happening. That's why I got that picture. And so you guys all today are that butterfly. So uh, let's fly free for God. <laughs> Prophesy and speak into that to the congregation. Does that make sense? Does that speak to your spirit? Yeah, yeah. I would love that, actually. <laughs> so I want to see. <laughs> Alright, God. Um, give me a word for all the people here. For all of them. Actually, I got a word for you. Jamie. Jamie, I got a word for you during praise and worship. Um, I just heard me. Don't start crying, you're going to make me cry. <laughs> I'm trying to hold it in. Um, <laughs> don't worry, I'm going to cry later but if I ever get this message. Um, but I just heard the Holy Spirit wanting me to tell you that you are the apple of God's eye. And to not forget how much He loves you. And that when He sees you, He sees Jesus. And nothing else. Because you're one in Him. And so, you're everything that Jesus died and paid for. And when He looks at you, that's all He sees. Is that. Alright, so, I got a cool one for everyone. And, and it was just like, it was just like God telling me about how everyone in this room has prayed to Him, has asked a request or asked God of something. They prayed for Him. They prayed to Him, right? And what God was telling me was that each and every one of you, your prayers are going to be answered. 
You've been asking for it. You've been diligent. You've been obedient. And God wants to reward you. And God is rewarding you. Whether you see it now, or tomorrow, or when you go home, you guys are going to see that. You're going to see the benefit of your prayers. Because God loves you. God loves all of you. And it's just so amazing. I'm just super excited. Because some of you guys are going to go home today and have testimonies for next week. It's so cool. Because your prayers are getting answered right now. And that's just how it works. I love it. Because God loves us so, so much. Everything that we want, whether it's a prayer for our kids, a prayer for work, a prayer for something else, they're going to be answered. Because God loves you. He sees your heart. He sees all your hearts. He sees Jesus. You guys are all light. And you guys deserve to just shine bright, no matter where you are. And that's what you do. And so God just wants to answer your prayers, and He is. And that's just what I got. Receive it. With that freedom comes wisdom for the next steps. And that's what some of you are asking for next steps. I know. Two of you are looking next steps. And mm, mm, clarification for that. And so just receive that. Expect that. His word says, I will guide you with mine eye. This is the Old Testament. The New Testament, the Holy Spirit guides in all truth. He says, my sheep hear my voice. A stranger they won't follow. So when you're questioning yourself, in that freedom, as those butterflies that Samuel was talking about, coming out of the cocoon to the next level, to the next things that God has for you, you have his heart. So when it's you, when this is according to your scripture, he says, go for it. Go for it. You have my blessing in that. It lines up with the word of God. So go for it. Go boldly in it. And rejoice because you've heard his voice. There's no doubt. There's no fear. There's no, I don't know if I'm doing the right thing. Just a release out of that. And tonight we're going to be talking about um, expectation. We kept hearing that voice. Jesus is calling. <laughs> if you haven't already, please do silence for us. <laughs> Uh, I heard the Holy Spirit saying, as we're talking about it, we're going to ask this question when we get started. What are you expecting this year? Mm -hmm. And I heard the Holy Spirit say, um, if you will expect and anticipate, when we get through tonight, if you will expect and anticipate what it is that He's putting in, putting in your heart, He will fulfill it. Amen. Yeah. That's what I think. So whatever you're expecting in 2022, desire it, expect it, anticipate it, and he says, and I will fulfill that. So. Okay. So, so actually, uh, um, Holy Spirit, with that, um, the thing that he pointed out to me instead of saying that, the thing that he wanted me to say was that with those things that you're expecting of, speak it. Speak that you're going to get it. Because with that expecting, you're not going to be like, oh, this is going to happen. You're not just saying that. It's also saying, this is going to happen. Like, like with joy and authority, because you know it's going to happen. You're not just like, I hope this is going to happen. You're like, this is going to happen. And you speak that. And when you speak that, and then you see it come to pass, you're like, yes. Nice. It's amazing. Because you're going to get what you want. Because out of the desires of your heart, God blesses you. It's amazing. That's all I have to say. Thank you so much. I saw the example of a, if you were planning on buying a car, okay? Most everybody's bought a car here. You're getting close to it. But 
when you're planning to buy a car, all right? You're looking, you're seeking it out, you find that car that you like, you're like, man, I like this model right here. And then your anticipation starts to rise because now that you've focused in on this is what you're wanting, now you start to move toward it, and you're like, okay, now I need to find a dealership that has it, or I'm praying and believing God's going to open up the door for this, and there's all this anticipation and expectation, and you can already see yourself driving that car, even though you don't own the car, because you're starting to think about the car, and, start to, and then you start to notice that Everybody else has the same car that you are trying to get. You know, they've never seen them before. You know, every bought a car, and then all of a sudden you realize they're all over the road. You know, <laughs> but this expectation, this thing of planning and moving toward it and doing that—that that is what we're going to be talking about tonight. And that's what God wants you to do with what He's putting in your heart: is to move toward it, see it, grab hold of it, go after it, that expectation, excitement. What He was talking about, you know. Moving toward what God has put on the inside of you. Because He has put something on the inside of you, each one of you. So, it's time. Is that why you raise your hand? Yes. When Stan was playing in, praying in tongues earlier, I heard the Holy Spirit say, I have to be obedient. You know, I was reading about that the other day. You have to be obedient. When you hear it from the Lord, it's not good to not say what He tells you what He wants to say. Go with it. He loves you so much. So much. And He says, trust me. Trust me. You know, wherever you go, the store, to work, to school, wherever you're at, you see a person in need or they, they look... They need prayer. He said to tell you to trust him. Just take that step. Don't be afraid. I'm going to do it through you. I need you to do it through you. So when you see somebody, you know, don't let the enemy tell you different. I know I said something like that earlier, but that's what I'm hearing, how much he loves you. You want to know how much he truly loves you. He really loves you. And he wants to work through you. And he wants to show you. And he says, as soon as you take that first step, you're going to see it. And it's just going to give you more boldness to him. Whoa, this is really happening. This is really working in my life. He wants to show you. He needs you to take that first step. Don't let fear, don't let anything else get in the way. Just do it, and you're going to see it, and you're just going to, from that moment on, you're just going to just start blowing, talking, praying for people, and he's just going to pour his love into you. Thank you, and amen. Amen. Hallelujah. It's time for me to be a new year at work. Yes. Don't make him wrap you up. You know what else needs to go to work? Let's go. It helps to have somebody like Sian that will just tell you, you've got to come up here. <laughs> Were you going to say that if I didn't say anything that way? Or was it, I mean, I'm just wondering if you didn't know that. That's okay. I usually wait and give everybody an opportunity to be able to be here first. Yes. <laughs> um, okay, yeah, so when... Um, of um, like this church, not, not this building, but like this church as, the, as like a portion of the body of Christ. And he just showed me like this joyful dance and, and it was like this room filled with dancing and praise. And it was just such a wonderful and like compassionate time because it was like just all these brothers and sisters gathered together and then there would be people coming in and they weren't a child of God, but they came in and then they left a child of God. And, and it's and that's cool. And so what God was saying was he, he wanted me to prophesy over this church and say that that this church is going to be a house of joy and of compassion. And um, yes, and 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 a lot of us, um, many of us, probably most of us actually, we're gonna we're gonna meet people or maybe we even know people now who need that. We're gonna be like, oh, my friend, whatever, whether they know Jesus or they don't. 
we're going to say, oh, well, they need some joy. They need some ca- compassion. God, I want to, I want to take them somewhere. But you know, where, where can they find that? And and you're gonna, and God's gonna, Holy Spirit's gonna highlight. This is the place. This is the house of joy, and of compassion. And you know, obviously, all all the other things in, in the spirit. But God just really wanted me to highlight that of like. This is this is what we take action for, right? We we make we make the the place that we're at, even though this is like another building, this is where we're at right now, Saturday nights, we make this a place for God, right? You know, wherever you're at, whether it's somewhere in the middle of nowhere or you're in a church or wherever it is, where where these people gather, where their heart is, it's it's joy and it's compassion. So God's heart, right? here tonight that um, it was in such harmony with the praise uh, people and it was also joining in heaven with with the angels and it was like the unity was being bonded with this body tonight with heaven Amen Amen showed me was lots of butterflies and they were going out of the gray upward into the light and in the light and I'll just speak into this and declare that you too right here you too that you're going to not just have conversions and people that are born again but you will disciple and it's going to be easy you're going to disciple to where they renewed their minds and that it's going to be with the supernatural they're flying in. This is going to be different than kind of a long-term ministry that probably many people are used to. And in this congregation were some of those butterflies that you're going out of the gray. That isn't, you're not coming from the dark, the black, like the enemy's got hold on you. You're just coming out of the uncertainty, the double-mindedness, and you're coming into it. So I just declare over you two under the covering of these two that you're going to reach disciple and people just as the bible said signs and wonders will follow we just release yes. that in jesus name amen amen amen, amen. amen. I prayed by myself and I was like, Sam, I'm not going to speak the word. I was like, Sam, I want a word for both of us. 
And so then, um, I, my, in my mind, I was like, oh, it probably happened at the conference that we went to because we were there for the whole day up until we came here. And, and um, then, like, on the way, I was kind of like, God, we didn't get a word. I, I was really hoping we would. But then, but then right away, like, instead of going into doubt, I right away was like, no, there's still tonight. I was like, there, there's tonight, and I'm standing on that. And so when you were like, you two come up, I was like, it's happening, it's happening. <laughs> and, and it's kind of silly, but, but I think that it's a wonderful testimony just even going off of like being expectant of God and just like his character of like, I know he's a faithful God and I know his heart is for us because he's my best friend, he's my father, he's my lover. And, and when I ask him something, he always gives it to me. Amen. Yeah.
There's a few more people that's got words to give. Yeah, there is. Um, and then one of the things that we're also going to do is, is that, uh, what do you say the second part? The first part is just, there's still some words that haven't been given or some things that people didn't okay. say. I know you got one. I've been doing that for 10 minutes. <laughs> and you kept thinking in your heart, I mean, I, I was correct. You kept thinking in your heart, I'm new, and I don't know if I should go down there because I'm, I'm new. This yeah. is Cody. He's visiting with his wife, Shannon, from Woodland Park today. Hello. I have to attest, this is, this is not something that's normal for me, but I, I did feel an impression of something that I wanted to share. And it kind of goes along with this theme of butterflies that we had talked about. And the, uh, what God had shown me was, um, as we grow as believers and we mature, and uh, we come out of that cocoon and that chrysalis as butterflies in this world, um, in our obedience, in our demonstration of His gifts and uh, through power and healings and stuff, we are, what He wanted me to say is He wants to glorify Himself through us. Yes. He okay. wants us to go out into this world to bring glory to Him yeah. um, through our obedience. And the parallel that He showed me, I don't know who this is for, but the parallel He showed me is that in the Old Testament, His Spirit only came on certain individuals at certain times for certain purposes. And I think someone here is looking at people thinking they've got something special. And God is saying, that same spirit that I put on those individuals is in you. Right. You are that special person Amen. that is supposed to bring glory to me. Amen. 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 So if that was you, receive that word. Yep. And by receive, I mean, say, yes, Lord, I believe that that is the truth. Your word is truth. And if you said it, I believe it, and it doesn't matter how I feel, that is the truth. At the same spirit, verse John 4, 17, as Jesus is, so are we in this world. Yep. Amen? So claim that. Speak that like Samuel said. Just 
the Lord is always so like like happy with I guess the way I'm trying to say is the spirit is always leading when we're here. And at other churches there could be different things that people try to do with lights and certain things and like the smoke and the fog machines, but we don't need that. The spirit just leads through here and we let it lead him lead and you guys let him lead all the time and that's what makes it so special. And also for Jamie, right? I when we've been crying, you've been making me cry a lot and when I look at you, I just see so many like bright things ahead. That's the word, bright and light. And when I I can just envision you coming up, smiling, and being so happy, and that he has so many things ahead of you, that he's so excited for you to start. And that I'm really excited for you too. <laughs> and Samuel, like, I just wanted to say, when I was sitting back there, the Lord is so proud of you, and I am so proud of you because I watched you grow up from when I first knew you, and man, it is amazing. <laughs> like, I can attest to that one. Amen. <laughs> so amazing what He's done in your life and how you oh, yeah. listen to Him, and you're like the light that you shine. And the way that you listen to him is inspiring. And you are so bold, and it inspires so many people. And I am like so excited for both of you guys. You're amazing. You're amazing. And God has great plans. And I, when I see you, I'm just get excited. And it makes I'm just overjoyed for everything. And then the last thing I wanted to share was about what you guys were talking about anticipating and expect, like expecting. So, a few months ago, the Lord started putting on my heart to follow His will for my life. And I always, like, was seeking Him. But I didn't necessarily make that change where I knew that I was in the middle of God's will, of where He wanted me, and doing exactly what I felt like He wanted me to do. And it was, I knew that, like, following what God's will was going to be hard because I knew there was going to be some things I had to say goodbye to and I knew that it was going to be a lot of change but that didn't stop me and the Lord was preparing me along the way and I was expecting these things and I was anticipating them because I knew he had told me that they were going to happen I just was he was being patient with me which was very nice and but I knew that track, and, he, and it was nice because he started to change the desires of my heart and based on what he wanted for me. And track had been something I had done my whole life, and it just wasn't working out for me. I was getting injured from it, and I wasn't, like, it just wasn't where I wanted to be anymore. And the Lord knew that for a while, but it took me a little bit. So anyway... A couple months ago, there was two things that I was seeking the Lord on that I knew that He, like, wanted me to take, like, a different route. And it's very exciting because just recently I had made the decision on both of them. And now, like, sitting in God where God wants me right now is very exciting. Looking forward and being like, man, I'm like... All I have to do now is just listen to the next steps. And when people are saying next steps tonight, it makes me really excited because I have now like laid down my life like when Moses threw his rod on the ground and God said, pick it up by the tail and it was a snake. And he picked it up by the back, <laughs> back up by the tail. And that's like kind of what I did with my life. I threw it down. I was like, okay, I'm picking up by the tail and I'm letting you lead. Mm -hmm. And... That's just very exciting, and I just wanted to say that all along the way, I was ex like expecting these things to change, and that God told me, and even though it was hard, I still listen, and it's so much more rewarding than following my own way or anything, and I know He has so much better things than 
anything I could imagine. And even when it's hard, I still believe, yes, he, he says, I have a plan for you, and I have these, like, I will prosper you, and he has a faithful plan, and that's, and so I keep trusting in those things. And then now, with expecting and anticipating, I can now look forward and anticipate, yes, I'm going to have friends and at school, and I'm going to experience this joy that you've been waiting for me to experience, and I'm so excited, and all these things, and I know that God has friends for me ahead, and I'm like so excited. And so, I guess I just wanted to say that, that and I feel like, I don't know, it was really hard to come up here, but I, expecting him to do those things and being faithful, like she said, even if it didn't happen that day, or she didn't feel like it in the moment, I'm like, no, God told me two years ago I was going to have some good friends. And I know that that's going to happen no matter what, because nothing can change what God told me. Even if it was two years ago, and even if I took a detour, it doesn't matter. His promises that he had for me are still there, and I'm excited because I get to experience those now. Amen.
Holy Spirit through the Word of God and the might of the Holy Spirit we will go forward and do things the way uh, God wants it done. Mm -hmm. But in all things have proven ourselves as the ministers of God and we know that we're all ministers. Mm -hmm. We're all uh, to go out there and minister to people as someone was saying today that these young people, oh man, that really encouraged me to hear these young people tonight. Mm -hmm. God is dealing with our young people, mm -hmm. not just here, but throughout. Yes. They are going to have such an impact on this world now in this night of days, mm -hmm. and we're expecting that. Yes. We mm -hmm. have expectation of that, we're seeing that. So we got to keep encouraging them also, give them space like you're giving them tonight mm -hmm. to speak and to, to start spreading their wings, so to, so to speak. Yes. That's a good thing. We see all things have proven ourselves as ministers of God in much patience. And then uh, another scripture came to my mind just earlier watching all this. It's uh, over here in First uh, Corinthians 14. But in all prop okay, here it says, but if all prophesy and uh, there come in one that believeth not, or one unlearned, he is convinced of all, and he is judge of all. Thus are the secrets of his heart made manifest, so falling down on his face, he will worship God and report that God is the leader of the truth. We mentioned tonight that by a few people said this is not a normal service that they're used to seeing. See, this is not normal uh, religion that's mm -hmm. out there, see. And, and mm -hmm. years ago I'd seen this in churches where people were watching out for the Spirit, being sensitive to the Holy Ghost and letting the Holy Ghost work. See, that's very important, and then following the scripture, see, because uh, sometimes some, the Holy Ghost will move on someone to get up and speak and say something, then when he is done, you know, working in this order here, as God has put it, he can sit down and someone else will get up, and then the flow of the Holy Spirit through the service just keeps going and going, and everybody gets edified. It's so great to see. Thus are the secrets of his heart made manifest, so falling down on his face, he will worship God and report that God is in you of the truth. How is this then, brethren, when you come together, every one of you has a psalm, doctrine, tongue, revelation, has an interpretation. Let all things be done unto edifying. If any man speak in an unknown tongue, let it be by two, or at most by three, and let by course, let one interpret it. If there's no interpreter, let him keep silence in the church, and let him speak to himself and to God. Let the prophet speak by two or three, and let the others judge. If anything be revealed to another that sits by, let the first hold his peace, that you may all prophesy one by one, that all may learn, and all may be comforted. So, Amen. that's the word of God. And he gave me that just before service. Amen. Amen. This is the end. 
I told somebody the other day, I'm standing in the book of Jude, looking into the book of Revelation. And so what do we need to do? We need to put on the form of God. We need to stop looking back. We need to cast down those grave clothes that hold us and bind us and go forth in the power and the anointing of God. because I was sitting there and then suddenly I just like, and Marjorie was just telling me about this. He was saying, you know, sometimes you like feel something and then you're like, oh, it's actually from another person and I had that and then Holy Spirit was like, Aaron, do it. And I was like, mm, but what if? Okay, here we go. Here comes She's through. Up Amen. and spiritually birth these words, and I mean, like, pour it 
everything, like, I mean, like, pour your life out into this next generation because there, I mean, we are seeing uh, atheists being pumped out and all of this stuff, but the thing is, is when you starve something, it doesn't make the hunger go away. It actually makes them more hungry. These kids are scared. They are starving. And they are, I don't know why I keep looking at you, but I just keep looking at you. Um, but um, they're starving. So be ready to just be spiritual midwives or like birth warriors. So the the fivefold ministry is for what purpose? Mm -hmm. the saints, right? Mm -hmm. That's what it's for. And so um, we we are I well, I and we but have have a heart to see the fivefold ministry gifts working in this church, all five. Mm -hmm. I've only ever been in one of the church where all five were working. Mm -hmm. and, and I've always had a heart for that ever since. But to have the fivefold ministry gifts working at the same time, which is why it works out really good because we're the hoggers of up here, obviously, because we want everybody to be a part. Mm -hmm. And one of my biggest things in my heart is tonight is the first of many times that you'll see the Holy Spirit working in this fashion. Mm -hmm because of the fact that it's the opportunity for you to step out. And as you step out and you share, you grow. Okay? You may not feel it in the moment because you're nervous and you're all the other stuff, but when you step out in that, you break down the walls. Ain't that right, Ross? You break down the walls, don't you, Ross? I know. I'm telling you. So, you have to break down the walls and step out. And these are the these times are coming where you will have these opportunities to do that. But sometimes you don't like for minister or God's given us a word and He's moving and He wants that word to be ministered. But then there's other times, just like this right here, where you're going to see services where we're going to be moving like this or something very similar to this because of the fact that our heart this year is to see the Holy Spirit move in signs and wonders and to see things birth. I want to see the power of God moving in our services, you know, not just in word, but in, in acts, in people sharing and people prophesying of each other, what we're doing tonight, you know, but in greater degrees, okay? Um, I'm not saying tonight is not good, but I'm saying it's a, I have some things in my heart that I'm expecting in 2022 that, that this is the beginning stages of it right here. And so, did you have some work? Okay, I thought I saw it. I hate it. I disagree. Huh? I disagree. Okay. Yeah. Come on down, Miss. Gotta work. Time's up. Let's go. Iron sharpens iron, man. Mm -hmm. There might be some sparks, but it's good.
and I asked him to remove all the obstacles in my life. And and a few months later, I just I see everything, everything that wasn't supposed to be in my life removed. Uh, I mean, mm, uh, <clears throat> my calm mind, you know, as, as a person just walking the earth, I see myself stripped of all my family, my friends, everything. And, and it was right when I found this church, as this was going on. <coughs> I have never experienced such unsurpassable peace, unsurpassable understanding of peace that I've experienced in my life. The Holy Spirit working in me. I was reborn six years ago, and I tell you, I saw miracles. Uh, I'm receiving the miracles, and, and this church is because of that. And he told me recently, just everything's coming together, and we're going to call me last week. And I've been praying on this. I'm reflecting on this. One of the part of the prayer I asked a year, I asked a year ago was for yeah, to be with the obstacles in my life so I'd be closer to him. And I've never been so alone, but so filled with Christ in my life. I have such a uh, such a relationship with him that I've never possibly understood could even happen. And man, miracles, uh, prophetic words for people, friends. Uh, throughout my days, every day, um, I'm, I'm, I'm sharing, I'm just, I'm just projecting Jesus and my faith with other people. Anyways, he told me, uh, I, I, I'm here, he told me this is my new family. And even though my family was great, <laughs> quite a loss, but, but this, was, this is so much fun that people need to know. And I'm sharing this so much with everybody else. And one of the reasons I do sit over here is because I uh, don't wear glasses here because I can't see when I'm crying anyway. <laughs> and I, I'll tell you, I'm, I'm wrecked with this place. And this is the Holy Spirit. This is truly what I see but ever since the day I was reborn. And I received miracles in my life and see miracles to other people's life. And I truly declare the Lord <laughs> and pray over people and they see miracles in their life when I pray with them and just, uh, it, it's amazing. Like you told me this is this is your new family, and the butterfly thing, man, Jesus, that's amazing. This is an amazing word for this for this church today, because that became I left right back in my chair today. This is this is new for me. I've never been able to do this in my life. But I tell you what, uh, the Lord told me that this year everything He did in my life this last year is going to going to come together, it's coming together right now, to have, to do everything that I'm supposed to be doing. His blueprint of my life in the Holy Spirit starts today. Everything he's been doing, and I started doing this.
expected. But I also kept hearing the Holy Spirit say that don't think that I haven't seen or do you give it up. And he said, this year is a year of restoration. And this year, I'm going to restore to greater in ways that you didn't see, in ways you haven't imagined. More is coming back to you than what you had before. And you will see that. And go, wow. God, you did not forsake me. You're going to see the glory of God in your life this year in restoration in areas that you did not even imagine. In Jesus' name.
How I know. Hallelujah. Said yes to Jesus. Yes. And your words up on the screen. Well, thank you, Father, for this time together. We just thank you. We all praise and honor the glory in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you will guide us into all truth. Yes. And you do not speak to yourself, but only what you hear from the Father. So we thank you for all the things that we have seen and experienced and heard. We thank you that we are faithful to write them down and to meditate on your word blessings that you've given us. And we say yes. yes. We say yes to you. We say yes to your word. We say yes to obeying you.